Oh, oh, science. Science is great. I love science, me. I mean, it answers really, really important questions, such as who would win in a fight between a, a Spinosaurus and a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I, I, I mean, they didn't live at the same time, or if they did, there was only a very brief period when they did, but that's the kind of question we really need to know the answer to. I read about that in my favourite online science journal, IFL Science, because IFL Science, I really do. And the, the kinds of fascinating things it can tell you. I, for example, it shows you that if you put lots and lots of litter and rubbish in an area, it makes people more prejudiced. So that means we can build a better society if we try really hard. That's the kind of thing science does. It shows us how to build a much, much, much better society. It's brilliant. I love science, me. Um, equally, I was reading in IFL Science that we're becoming less intelligent, that we're becoming stupider and stupider. And that... Oh, hang on, that can't be right. Oh no! Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of A Quick Pint. Now, or is it a jolly heretic? A jolly heretic, that's the one. Now, today I would like to talk about an interesting new finding which came out last week, which was uh, taken up, surprisingly, by the, um, the, the left-wing newspapers, um, and in particular, IFL Science. And you can guess what IFL Science stands for. Um, and this article was entitled, IQ scores in the US have recently dropped for the first time this century. And it was written by somebody called Tom Hale. And uh, yeah, uh, of course, it, it caveated it under a picture of children taking an IQ test by saying IQ scores are not a perfect measure of intelligence, which is a bit of a cop out because you might as well say that a weighing scales is not a perfect measure of differences in weight. Um, but even so. Um, and uh, but anyway, the point is it quite it quite fairly uh, presented the findings of this new study, uh, which was uh, in 2023, looking for the Flynn effect in a recent online US sample by Dvorak et al, um, which was published in the journal Intelligence. And um, if anything, it covered up the findings. It covered up the truth, which was uh, rather darker uh, than it um, th th than it presented. Uh, this is that they did an online survey in this study between 2006 and 2018 of 394,378 people and they divided them up into their various levels of education and also into their age cohorts and they found that there was a tremendous uh, decline well, tremendous there was a, there was a slump anyway um in intelligence and in particular there was a decline in the key kinds of intelligence that is to say verbal reasoning numerical reasoning uh, and uh, uh, visual problems uh now um What's the reason for this? What's what's actually going on? Well, they looked at various possible. What, what was equally found, which was quite interesting, was that the biggest slump, the biggest decline, was among those aged between 18 and 22. Now, this, of course, is what you would expect. We've looked in other videos at the way in which there is a negative correlation between intelligence and how many children you have of about uh, 0.1, uh, minus 0.1 or minus 0.2. We've looked in other videos at how this is genetically mediated. This is, uh, this is caused, this is a genetic issue. This is not happening due to environmental factors that are causing such as a poorer education system or whatever, because the decline is on G. The decline is on the most genetic component of, intel of intelligence. You can look at uh, intelligence as a little bit like height. Uh, if you look at height, the, the body, how big your body, your trunk is, is very substantially genetic. How long your legs are is much more substantially environmental. And it's the same with intelligence. You can break up the diff different sub-areas of intelligence. We can conceive of intelligence as, an intel as a sort of a pyramid with specialised abilities, like doing up your laces or driving a car or whatever at the bottom. And then you have the space above them, you have spatial, verbal and mathematical. Above them, you have G. Uh, which uh, all of the co all of the other aspects correlate with, and this G component is highly genetic. It's highly it's not very sensitive to environment. So, and we know that intelligence is going down on G because the prevalence of alleles that correlate with intelligence or that are associated with intelligence has been decreasing. In, for example, the Icelandic population over the last three generations, controlling for various factors that are obvious that might interfere with that. So, we're definitely becoming less intelligent, we're becoming less intelligent for genetic reasons. And and the report in IFL Science um, it refers to two papers of mine, which are one on the declining IQ in Finland, based on based on um, 
uh, master's thesis which looked at the the uh, uh, military data um, and one based on a French uh, uh, data which showed that we are de de declining in intelligence in those two countries and in the case of the French data it was shown by Michael Woodley of Mani who reanalyzed the data that I looked at but this was itself on G this is what's called a Jensen effect i.e. that the French were becoming less intelligent for genetic reasons now they look in the uh, in the IFL report well what's going on could it be the quality of education could the quality of education be going down could that be what's causing this uh, could it be something to do with nutrition could it be but, but no because if it was then this would be happening for environmental reasons wouldn't it this is an environmental effect whereas Emil Kierkegaard has looked at the supplementary material which the journalist for this article didn't bother to do had looked at the supplementary material that goes with the paper and shown that this is on G that G that the most genetically sensitive um, subtests are the ones that are in the most decline. So this is a Jensen effect. So this American sample is becoming less intelligent for genetic reasons, consistent with the French sample becoming less intelligent for genetic reasons, and Dutch as well, other ones that have, that have shown that the negative Flynn effect, i.e. a decline in IQ scores, is happening on G um, and is therefore substantially genetic. Now, Emil Kierkegaard has highlighted in a, a substat post a number of problems with this study <clears throat> so first of all it breaks people up into educational subgroups and says well look each of those is becoming less intelligent across time but the problem with that is that we are becoming more educated across time so that means that each um educational subgroup is becoming stupider across time by virtue of more and more people doing PhDs, more and more people doing master's degrees, more and more people doing bachelor's degrees, more and more people graduating from school and so on. So um, so therefore eventually if this carries on then everybody would have a doctorate and the average IQ of a person with a doctorate would be a hundred. So that they haven't control for that so that's a bit stupid. What's more interesting is the, is looking at the age cohorts uh, and dividing it up by age cohort and there yes you find something very interesting which is that the particular slump is among younger people which would be consistent with the chickens coming home to roost as it were uh, in terms of the way that over the last 100 years and even over the last 50 years uh, increasingly intelligent people have just been resigning from the gene pool en masse and so you would expect the younger generation to be considerably stupider than the older generation and uh, this is this is precisely what you see a second problem with the way they've done their sampling is that it's online volunteers that did this well um, how representative are online volunteers? I'm not sure, but the fact that it's cons that the findings are consistent with other data uh, would imply that perhaps uh, th this is reasonably representative. The third problem with it is a linguistic one, which is that they're not controlling for the fact that more and more people in America have English as a second language. So more and more people are Spanish native speakers. Um, to what extent is this going to interfere with the results? Uh, we, we, we can't know. But again, the fact they don't look into it. But again, the fact that it's consistent with other data means that it's, it's, it would be an extraordinary coincidence if this wasn't uh, if what they found wasn't actually what was going on. Uh, they talk about the idea that, oh, well, IQ tests are not a perfect measure of intelligence. As I've said, that's just a cop out. That's that's irrelevant. They are a very good measure of intelligence, as demonstrated by the fact that, the, uh, that IQ scores correlate with other intuitive, strongly correlate with other intuitive measures of intelligence, such as how well you do in school exams and things like this. <clears throat> For example, the correlation between how well you would do in what in England, what we would call our GCSEs, which is the school leaving certificate or formally leaving certificate at the age of 16, where you do a broad array of subjects, not just ones that you select that you're good at. Uh, then the correlation between how intelligent you are and how well you do in those is 0.7. So it's a very, very strong relationship. So what this is showing is that in America, seemingly, although there are caveats, uh, in America they are becoming less intelligent and they are becoming less intelligent for genetic reasons. Now, it's very interesting that this has been presented in a woke science magazine with the ludicrous title IFL science because I've always said that there is a difference between the, the scientist, the genuine scientist, and what I call the I love scientist, the Adam Rutherford type. The I, the I love scientist is in it for the prestige and in it because science is cool and in it because uh, 
being involved in science gives you gives you social status and and and, and he will um, um, he will limit his scientific findings such that they don't uh, question the current dogmas and such that if anything they uphold the current dogmas so I don't know what kind of shift we're having that they're prepared to give this research the time of day but they were very very interested in, when I published the research on declining French IQ they were, which is many years ago now they were very very interested in, in France I didn't know this I don't read the French papers but apparently it was big in France. It was reported in all the newspapers in France, and it was significant in France. And then I was asked to peer review an article critiquing my own article for intelligence, uh, which s commented about all of the traction that this research got in France. And I assumed this was because the French have this self-image of being intelligent, I guess, don't they? The, the, the French philosopher, the Jacques Derrida, sitting there, smoking, uh, sitting there by the Seine, sm smoking cigarettes and, and, uh, and discussing philosophy and the meaning of life life and Sartre and all of these deep intelligent French people and, and that's why it was particularly interesting to them um, and uh, it was particularly interesting to Finns when I showed the same thing in, or demonstrated evidence of the same thing in Finland I guess because Finns have this perception of themselves as oh well we, we, we may not be a very big country or a very important country or whatever but at least we're we're hard working and we're clever and whatever and we're, we have a good education system and that's how they kind of that's their cope and so to be told that they were declining in IQ was significant and therefore that they that, that it was reported in all of the newspapers here at the time many years ago now 10 years ago um so quite why it's Take, it's got somewhere in America, or in America, I don't know. I can only guess that people are on some level seeing this and talking about it and understanding it, and therefore it was worthwhile commissioning this this piece. And it was also, I think, reported in the Mail Online, which is the, 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 widely read in America. So I think that maybe we're seeing a shift where people are starting to understand that this is happening. You, that you're seeing it in everyday life, that we're becoming less intelligent. Um, and that's why even the IFL science crowd are going to have to start to accept it. So that's a fascinating development. And uh, yeah, well, hopefully then we can, uh, we, can, we can make our collapse, we can make our decline less painful than it would otherwise be. Hello, hello, hello! The Jolly Heretic is an online public house which meets on Mondays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time, 2pm New York, in which we discuss the kind of based, fearless science which is increasingly expunged from our woke, joke universities. If you would like to help the Jolly Heretic public house, and there are many ways you can do so, please, please, please become one of my patrons on Subscribestar. Also, if you want to, you can donate to the channel uh, using Odyssey and Entropy, and you can also purchase Jolly Heretic merchandise, such as uh, shirts and mugs. All of the links are in the description. Again, I'd be most violently grateful if you could assist the Jolly Heretic Public House, and I will see you all soon, and goodbye!